so welcome. So we're going to talk about spring identification today. Um, so it's January. Everything is frozen solid out here because it's been cold for weeks now. As you can see, we're standing on a little stream that comes through the woods right here and everything is frozen. So I have three springs back in the woods here and we're going to take a little walk over there and look at all three of them and just point out some of the characteristics of springs in the winter time. So this is probably the most amazing spring we have here. You'll notice that it's open and flowing water. So it kind of runs off that way. I mean it literally gushes out of the ground. So that's another typical spring characteristic. Um, if you look up the hill here there's little or no evidence of water flow. In other words, this isn't a spring that goes underground up the hill and comes out down here. It literally bubbles out of the ground right here. So, uh, you know, there's been some theories on this. A couple of people I've talked to think that this is actually a Native American surface well, which is how they established a water supply for a tribe or a group of people living in the woods. So this spring here, this is a neat one too because comes out of the ground. I mean, actually, you can see the water's flowing pretty good. Again, no ice. Really looks like someone built up a pile of rocks on top of the actual source. And if you come over here and take a look, there's actually a little hole right here where it almost looks like someone tried to protect their water source. You know, where if you listen, you can actually hear. You kind of see like everything that we've looked at today is frozen solid with the exception of the springs and all of a sudden we come across this slow moving water which is pretty open. You know there's little spots of water over there and over there. You know water moving this slow when it's this cold should not be moving it should be frozen solid. So this kind of indicates that there might be a spring in this direction. And you kind of see it goes underground and disappears for a little bit right here, which is one of the dangerous things about springs. If you don't get it at the source, then you could be drinking runoff or potentially contaminated water. And now we've kind of completely lost it. I don't see any water anywhere here. This does look like a storm flow area. So even if it is a spring, it might not be the best. So here we are, another spring. So as you can see, again, the spring is actually melting the snow and the ice as it runs down the hill. Pools of water like this should be frozen solid right now. If they're not, it definitely indicates groundwater. And this spring's kind of cool because it actually starts right here somewhere and flows out of the ground, but it kind of oozes out. You know, this. It's hard to identify a source. This spring would probably need a little bit of work. You, know, you might need to overturn some rocks, try to establish where the water, where the water is actually coming up. Because here if it rains, it's going to wash all down into your spring. So you probably want to go a little bit higher, find some place that isn't going to be uh, a place where runoff occurs, contaminating your spring. And I would dig around up in here and, you know, I would find a good spot and, that would probably be ideal, right up under that stone wall, trying to find the source, because it looks like it's up in there somewhere, where it's starting to flow down. And as you can see, you know, it flows down the hill a little ways, melting snow, but then once you get up a ways, you know, past that fallen log, it freezes again. 